This is Beverly Gossage. Uh, she is an HSA expert and a statehousecall.org featured blogger. Uh, Beverly, why is statehousecall.org an important blog in the free market healthcare movement? Um, I think first of all because it is an open forum in which those of us who believe in the free market approach to public policy um, are able to expand upon concerns across the state and um, you know instead of trying to reinvent the wheel in your state we can all talk about what's going on in each state how we can protect that and also legislators are always saying who else is doing this if we're going to do this in Massachusetts is somebody doing that somewhere else nobody seems to want to be the first to do something so it's important to know what's going on what bills are pending this is a great clearinghouse for you to be able to go there and voice your opinion health savings accounts. Yes. Is there a future for health savings accounts? Oh, health absolutely. savings accounts in America? Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you no, off. No. Um, the answer to that question is yes, as long as we continue to have education about health savings accounts. Um, as long as we have the propaganda that says they're only for the young, the healthy, and the wealthy, and unless you have $2,000 to put in an account, you don't need a health savings account. Um, as long as they're going to continue to perpetuate that, then we have to fight that uphill battle. The reality is, of course, what we know is that HSA qualified plans available by every carrier are just a way of lowering the premium and then giving you money to put in that account for you to use for day-to-day -day expenses. And of course that will always be around. Um, and I would like to see more people have that. They'll be better consumers and rates will go down even more. What, what do you think is the biggest threat to the American free market healthcare movement? Uh, the biggest threat is the idea that health care and health insurance are the same thing and that we all have a fundamental right to those, both of those things. Therefore, why don't we have a fundamental right to transportation and therefore you should all in the government buy me a car. We should have a fundamental right, right, to good transportation. We should have a fundamental right to many other things, uh, a home. We should all have a fundamental right to a home, so therefore the government should all give us a house. If we're not careful, then we, bec we become a socialist society where everybody's the same, and the minute we start to inhibit free market, then we start to have what a woman in Copenhagen told me a few months ago. We pay 65% in taxes, but I think it's worth it because if I go to the hospital, I've taken care of. What what states are on the cutting edge of innovation in healthcare and providing the best free market solutions to the constant healthcare conundrum? Um, the one thing that I can say about that is most, of course, most recently, my working with Kansas and Missouri. Uh, Missouri in particular has taken a great step with HB 818 to be able to say we're not going to mandate, we're not going to set up a separate pool, we're not going to have this connector where the government's in charge and this control over pricing and control over the types of plans that you have and make decisions for you. We're going to allow you to purchase your own policy on the free market already, which by the way, insurance carriers in Missouri have already lowered rates on their individual policies, particularly their HSAs, knowing those are very popular with individuals, especially those that are uninsured. Did you know 40% of the people who have an HSA were formerly uninsured before they purchased that type of plan? So by allowing them to purchase these kind of plans, allowing their employer to contribute to it through a cafeteria 125, we have also leveled the playing field as far as tax deduction goes. Don't have to get it through your employer to get a tax deduction anymore. So I'm very proud of what Missouri is doing and now Kansas is looking at doing something very similar. Thanks, Beverly. Sure. That's good. Ready? Go. Beverly, is there any room in Medicaid for HSAs? Absolutely. The thing is, is that Medicaid is a welfare program, correct? That says um, you may be having difficulty because you're low income, so you're trying to just try to provide for food, shelter. Um, health insurance may not be on your top priority. Therefore, we want to try to help you out with that. That's the idea, isn't it? It's not to try to keep people on these plans, so therefore um, I have a free ride if I need to go to the doctor. So if we were to take all of these people and we were to give them a voucher and say, let's determine about how much we as the federal and state governments together pay toward each 
we're going to take that amount of money. I'm going to give that to you in the form of a voucher. I'm going to keep you in the free market system along with all of the rest of us. No longer will you or your child have a Medicaid card that separates you as a B-class citizen, because that's how they're made to feel, from the rest of us. And you don't have to worry about, yeah, we're not taking any more Medicaid patients at this doctor's office. But you say, I took my voucher, I purchased a private plan, or I joined my employer's plan, and now your card doesn't say Medicaid. Your card says Humana, Blue Cross, United, just like everybody else. You can go to the same doctors like everyone else, and as your income grows, and it should, and you transition off of the welfare Medicaid program, you just keep the plan you have, and you start paying a, a larger portion of that. Now, if I say to you, you can take this voucher and you can purchase health insurance. Now you get to pick whatever plan that you like, correct? If you choose an HSA qualified plan with a lower premium, we will allow you to take the difference in premium, put that into, from the plan that we gave you, put that into an account, health savings account, it's a child health opportunity account, HOA, and you can use those dollars to pay for day-to-day -day incidentals. As you don't use them and most people don't, those dollars can continue to grow. When you transition into a private plan, you can continue to use those dollars to take care of your day-to-day -day expenses. We'll see the consumer involved. We'll see the consumer being care because it's the consumer is paying the cost, not a third party, not the government. We're not paying the provider directly. They're in the pool with all of the rest of us. We'll see the rates go down. They're not a second-class citizen, and HSAs can really play a part in that.